Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I title this message, Mistrust of the Lord, Mistrust of the Lord. So often we have individuals who seeing is believing in their world. If they don't see it, then they don't believe it. But I can tell you that you can take that type of attitude and you can just do away with it. When you're walking with the one true God, a person who mistrusts the one who has put breath in his body, the one who makes the heart beat, the one who has done so much for you, it isn't any wonder when the Lord ends up doing some things that cause you to say, I messed up. Mm -hmm. When I was out in the world and I was so caught up in what my flesh wanted and I was so caught up in all of the negativity that was going on around me, it was hard to trust the Lord. This being who I cannot see, I can't feel, is not like a human. I mean, you want me to do what? And there were still believers around me still praying for me, praying about my situations. You know, so much that was happening in my life, they believed while I still had my doubts. Doubting Thomas, (laughs) we remember all too well in the New Testament when he didn't believe He didn't believe that Jesus had rose from the grave. Uh Uh-uh, you got to show me, Jesus. And so Jesus had to show his hand where he, in fact, had been been, uh, put on the cross. Where the nails had gone through and now he was healed and walking around. I'm sure... Once he thought of everything that he just realized, wait a minute, what I just did, what I just said, I I, I mean, I'm a fool. Jesus is right before me. Jesus is right before me. Wait a minute. He is, he is who he is. I mean, you see. And this is what happens with some individuals after you have told them something and it doesn't quite resonate with them. And they're thinking about everything leading up to and the who, the what, the when, the where, the how, the why. And then it dawns on them. Oh, wait a minute. There is a God. I told you. And they're in that moment for Just a little while before they fall off the wagon and they're back to doing whatever they're doing. And then you come along again with another word and they're like, "Uh, don't tell me you're going to doubt God again. Don't tell me that you mistrust God. But we got those individuals who do just that. An example of this sort of thing is in Exodus 17, water from the rock. And I want to talk about what is happening here because I think it does align with what's happening in modern day times with some folks that they don't believe that God can do some things. And then when God doesn't do what they want, then they say, God, he doesn't exist. He doesn't care. I knew this was a waste because he didn't operate when you wanted him to operate. And so because You think that you're above God. God does a 180, a 360 on you. And you just, you just figure, well, I can't, I can't go there. I can't believe. Nope. mm -mm, I knew it until one day God does end up making some things happen and you feel bad. That you doubted God for so long. Or some folks are so prideful that they're like, well, it's about time. Uh Uh-huh. And you're only happy. You're only content, if you will, for a moment before the Lord says, oh, is that your attitude? (laughs) Okay. If that's the attitude that you're going to take on concerning me, you got what you got in the meantime. 
And he may give you more and more until eventually there is nothing else coming. Because the attitude, the pride, the mean-spirited behavior that some folks have concerning the one true God, the disrespect. And then, of course, throw in how they act toward the people of God. Uh, well, we have we have those children, those rebellious children, complaining, getting an attitude, if you will, with Moses. Water from the rock is where we are. Exodus seventeen, study Bible, New King James Version. This is the Holman edition. Then all the congregation of the children of Israel set out on their journey from the wilderness of sin, according to the commandment of the Lord, and camped in Rephidim. But there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore, the people contended with Moses. Bible says the people contended. That means they had a fight. They were disputing. They didn't like what was happening. Okay. Give us water that we may drink. So Moses said to them, why do you contend with me? Why do you tempt the Lord? And for some of us, we say, why, why do we have some folks that want to play this little game of seeing is believing with us? Why is it that they want to take a message, disagree with that message, talk about the messenger, act all evil, you know, ornery, and then want to um, act as if God, yeah, he's not going to do, do nothing. Mm -mm. Do you really want to tempt God? <laughs> Lord Jesus. So Moses said to them, why do you contend with me? Why do you tempt the Lord? And the people thirsted there for water and the people complained against Moses and said, why is it you have brought us up out of Egypt to kill us? and our children and our livestock with thirst. So they're having an attitude. They're contending. They're complaining against Moses. Have you ever had anyone complain against you? You're going about your day. And then somebody comes along and wants to talk about what they saw or what they heard or what they inferred from the way you said something or your countenance. And you're saying it's not even like that. They got this complaint. And what hurts is when somebody who knows you well knows that's not how you handle things. Mm -mm. But yet they want to side with the complainer. That burns me up. <laughs> I'm just like, Lord, this person knows better. Why? Why would they say this? Why would they do this? Why would they even come to me and ask me such a foolish question? Did you? Did I what? Is that really something that you need to take a valuable time to come over here and address with me? When you already know this person has a long track record of not only complaining about the littlest of things, concerning me but this person has complained about you and him and her but you see the devil does that sort of thing put some people up to just messing with you trying to get you to have a bad day put in this spirit of discord where there shouldn't be and the person who falls for it usually is the one who they're not thinking about God. They're not praying. They don't believe in God. You know, they got their own share of mistrust concerning God. You see, so the complaint is lodged against you. And you're saying, Lord Jesus, that's what Moses pretty much was doing when he was talking to God about these complaining folk <laughs> let us continue to read so this is exodus 17 and i am on verse 3 
And the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why is it you have brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? Reading on verse four. So Moses cried out to the Lord saying, what shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. You see, he went to the Lord. You see your people acting up. You see this person lodged a complaint against me. And not only that, the manager, the supervisor, the coworker, whoever believes this foolishness, Lord, please help me, help me in this matter. Okay. So Moses cried out to the Lord saying, what shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. Verse five. And the Lord said to Moses, go on before the people and take with you some of the elders of Israel. Also take in your hand, your rod with which you struck the river and go. Now, if you follow the instructions that are given to you by someone who you trust, someone who you know that you know. It's not going to lead you astray and you do what is right. Your mind is right in doing whatever they've instructed you. Your heart is in the right place. Things usually work out. I've been on the planet long enough to say that things usually work out when you follow instruction. When a person knows a person very well and they say, listen, I need to tell you something about this one right here. Now, the only way that you're going to be able to win the favor, the trust, the understanding, what have you, is you're going to have to do A, B, C, and D. So often we got individuals who are given very simple advice, very simple instruction, and they won't use it. They overthink, they worry, they're asking too many questions. And meanwhile, all these things are happening. Negative, of course. Now, why does that happen? Because someone doesn't trust the advice. Doesn't uh, doesn't trust the advisor. Now, if you can see that when it comes to humans interacting with humans, see it when it comes to a human being interacting with the one true God in the spiritual realm. Lord, I want some things to happen. I believe that you have called me to, let's just say something common that so many people pray about money. I believe Lord that you want me to have some money that's going to pay off bills, not make monthly payments. No pay off bills. I believe that. And I know that I've got to do some things in order to make some things happen. Because you have used your advisors, you have instructed me. Now, the question is, did you listen? Did you do what it was that God wanted you to do? Or he put his messenger up to telling you. We know some common advice is save money. How am I going to save? You can be able to cut down, reduce on some of your spending. How am I going to save? You can figure out some creative ways of saving some money. Instead of taking the long way to work, you take the short way to work, you know, so that way you're cutting the costs on the gas or you don't drive at all. You get on the bus um, or you carpool, you see. So the bottom line is, is that you start to see a savings and therefore you have more money. I mean, God does that sort of thing. It's not just always money in your hand or money that comes through the mail or money that comes through a paycheck, or money that comes through investments. Sometimes it's those cost-saving measures, if you will, that you can see when it comes to a workplace setting, but have you tried when it comes to your home, right? So God gives this simple advice, right? Simple instruction, and man decides, eh, I don't like it. I don't, I don't like it because that means that I'm not going to be able to get this done and that done. And I really want to buy this and that. Okay. The instruction was what? Save money. Man said, no. In his saying no, 
disobedience, rebellion, what have you. What is he saying? He's saying that he doesn't trust the Lord. When he walks away and goes somewhere else and does something else, he is saying that what God has put a man or woman up to saying to bring that man out of his captivity, his bondage, financial and otherwise. Nope, I don't trust it. I don't believe it. And I don't believe that God is with that person. Next. Okay, next it is. But for the one who listens to the Lord, the one who says, you know what? I like that. I think I'm going to do that. That one, he may not see things happen quickly, but eventually he does see some things because he takes one piece of advice and then he starts to think like God. Uh Oh, because now he's going to the Lord and he's asking the Lord, what shall I do? Right. And then he's given instruction and now he utilizes what he's learned. Moses knew that he could not deal with these complaining folks. I mean, ready to stone him on his own. He had to go to the one true God. How many times have individuals just did things on their own and ended up being sucked in by the enemy snare? The enemy shows up, tricks you once again into spending your money, giving your money away, losing your money, gambling your money, giving the wrong person some money. You see? Because I don't want to listen. Because I want to do my own thing. You see? So, coming back to the Bible, Lord Jesus, I want somebody just to really think about these things so that you can get on the right path. Path, not past. (laughs) But path, mentally, physically, spiritually, so that you're not the one that's always, oh my goodness, I don't know what to do, and da 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 da, you know, or on occasion. Go to the one true God. Have enough faith, that mustard seed faith, that mustard seed is so tiny, trusting and believing that if there's an audio even on this channel that resonates with resonates with you and it lingers long after you've listened to it, chances are you're supposed to be doing something. <laughs> you weren't supposed to just listen to the audio. God wants you to do something in your life. You see, so there's no sense in complaining, right? Going to the messenger talking about, oh, I don't like what you said. and I'm, You need to do something different. And I don't like your delivery and all that. Did you get something out of it? Well, not really because blah, blah, blah. Well, then I can't help you. <laughs> you are going to have to spend that time with the one true God, just like what I do. If you want to get a word that sounds more like what you're after. <laughs> Maybe a male speaker as opposed to a female speaker. Maybe someone who doesn't do, you know, these little voices. <laughs> I do have people that actually come through that they, they don't like, they don't like too much of anything. But you continue to listen though. And I guess that's a good thing even though you could you don't like anything but maybe the lord's word will resonate (laughs) anyway so moses here he is he's enlisting the help of the lord and the lord said to moses go on before the people and take with you some of the elders of israel also taking your hand your rod with which you struck the river and go sometimes god he supplies those tools along the way maybe the words aren't enough so he says well this is where i want you to go this is what i want you to do and this is a tool i want you to use i feel like in a spiritual realm somebody needs to trust god for the tool that you need in order to get some things done sometimes the reason why things aren't working is because people don't have the necessary materials the resources and they don't want to give up off of any money to buy the necessary materials resources they don't want to help anybody else because sometimes the breakthrough is just simply helping somebody else my breakthrough has come 
because I trusted in the Lord, number one. And then he spoke to me, told me what I needed to do. And then he provided me with the information, with the money, with the uh, people in whatever situation I might be in when I've trusted him and everything worked out, you see. So he's given the instruction. He's told what to use and what to do. Okay. So Exodus 17, 6, behold, I will stand before you there on the rock in Horeb and you shall strike the rock and water will come out of it that the people may drink. These complaining people ready to stone this man. The man goes, talks to the Lord. The Lord is going to take care of their need using a mere vessel. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. Notice it was God using a man. Seeing is believing, right? People are watching. And so in the sight of the elders of Israel, they're seeing water coming out of a rock, Lord Jesus. If God can take water out of a rock and satisfy the people's thirst, how much more can he do for you? That's somebody's word. How much more can he do for you? A rock. Just picture it. A rock. A man walks up to it, strikes the rock with the same rod that was used back when he struck the river. And now here's that water coming out. I'm seeing some individuals and I can't make this up. Thank you, Jesus. I'm seeing some individuals and I receive this too. (laughs) Where the Lord in the spiritual realm is taking a rod and he's striking your wallet. See that. Envision it. And there's bills. There's bills. Not bills you got to pay. But bills that you can use to pay bills. Hallelujah. Somebody can symbolically just do that. I dare you, I double dare you to do it. Just take, just take your hand even and just slap at your purse, slap at your wallet. Do you believe in the one true God? Do you believe that he can make everything in your life in this moment be resolved? Those issues, those lingering issues. I'm receiving it. I'm looking at my purse right now. (laughs) I didn't know coming into this message that I would be even doing this. And I'm slapping on my purse right now. Hallelujah. I'm slapping on my purse right now. Hallelujah. The Lord is going to work it out. He's going to work it out. There's other individuals who... You got this mistrust of the Lord? Okay. Pray for yourself. Just put your hand on your head and pray for yourself. What is the need? Say it out loud. It doesn't matter that that you keep praying the same old prayer. God never gets tired. When is he going to move? We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. But what we do know is faith. What we do know is trusting and believing. And this man, if he hadn't trusted the Lord, he would have never got off of his behind, walked over there, struck the rock. If he didn't believe in the Lord 
or trusted in the Lord, he would have never went to him in the first place. I'm challenging someone. You just got to be a little bit more proactive in this walk. It's not enough to just listen. You got to be a little bit more proactive. Sometimes it's not enough to read the Bible. Mm -mm. You got to get up, grab your car keys, and drive where God wants you to drive. Sometimes it's not enough to just go into the workplace. But you got to go in the workplace ready for whatever it is that God's going to do because you prayed. Mm. And I do mean whatever. Because sometimes people think that they're going to leave workplaces because, uh, well, I'm going to give my two-week notice. And uh, these days, a lot of folks are learning that uh, that two-week notice, what two-week notice? (laughs) I'm finding out in the spiritual realm that um, there's going to be a lot of folks, once again, that's going to be needing care. They're going to be needing nurses and doctors. They're going to be needing neighbors and best friends and relatives to care for them. And when you don't necessarily trust some people, right? (laughs) It's hard, right? To deal with them being in your house, touching your body, bringing your food, giving you your medicine and all of that. So... That's why you got to trust in the one true God. God, I trust in you. I may not trust her. I may not trust him. But when the day comes, I trust in you. And I believe that you are going to protect me, that you're going to order my steps. And that if things get out of hand, that you will be the one to remove that person out of my presence. That's somebody's issue. See, there's so many people on this channel. And for some of you all. You may feel like, well, you know, there are times where she's, you know, off topic or she's here and there. It's what the Lord brings about in my spirit for who's listening. You see. It's still. It's still about the truth. It's still about trusting in him and not believing in liars who don't trust in God. It's still about walking with the Lord, even when people have a complaint against you. The message is still about trusting in the Lord, even during difficult times. And having the right resources and tools to be able to get things done according to God's will. And sometimes it takes some seeing for some folks in order for them to believe. And that's all right, too. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock in Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water will come out of it that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. So he called the name of the place Masa and Meribah because of the contention of the children of Israel, and because they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Mm, mm, mm. Is the Lord among us or not? Is the Lord really with her or not? Is God really with some of those bizarre messages where her speaking in some kind of foreign tongue or not? You see? Mm, Lord Jesus. At Rephidim, the Israelites had complained about lack of water, but again... The core issue was their mistrust of the Lord. The level of their hostility continued to increase. Lord Jesus. There was conflict. 
It was conflict between a man of God and the people who were following him. We get men of God as well as women of God who come through here. And some of them, when they come through here, they're dealing with their share of challenges with some of the folks that lean on them, sometimes a bit too much. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, where are you? I need you right now. You see, that's what some of them go through. The man of God and the woman of God, their burdens can be so heavy. So many ministers end up having short lifespans because they have massive heart attacks. All that preaching and shouting and stirring up one's emotions. Trying to convince, trying to make people see that God is real, that God loves you, that God cares for you, that God wants what's best for you. And then the audacity for some to turn around and say, well, I don't believe Lord Jesus. What was all the shouting for? What was all of the praying for Lord? If this is what they're going to say, if this is what they're going to do, if they're going to attack or threaten, or wish evil upon a man or woman of God. You see? The burden is heavy for so many during a time of great discord and challenge. And all God wants you to do is to continue to trust in him no matter what. No matter the outcome In this upcoming election. No matter the outcome. In one's legal proceedings. No matter the outcome. In one's conversation with someone. Concerning a marriage. No matter the outcome. Concerning. One's job. No matter the outcome. When it comes to confronting a relative or best friend, no matter what, I'm still trusting the Lord, even if I have to lose much. Lord Jesus, he may shun that Babu Ocean gaze. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be uplifted, be filled right now in the name of Jesus. Know that Jesus, he died on the cross. <laughs> Thank God we don't have to die on the cross. And when we believe in him, we've got access to the one true God. And by having access, we trust in the one true God. Lord, I have a burden. Lord, I have an issue. Lord, I I have a challenge and I need you to help in Jesus name. I want someone to be uplifted this day because I know the enemy's trying to mess with every believer, every believer, including myself at times. Don't trust God because God ain't going to deliver. You know what? When's the last time God did something for you? If God is this and if God is that, how come you don't have? Why do you continue to talk to these people? I don't think God is talking to you. I think you're making it all up. Oh, the enemy be messing, honey. Woo, Lord Jesus. And I'll say, I'm still going to do this message anyway. (laughs) Thank you as always for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen. You've been listening to YouTube and I'm enterprise seven. Feel free to like subscribe, comment. We do welcome giving on this channel and thank you in advance.